And then you bring her to an even keel with the stern planes and bring her to the proper depth and on an even trim fore and aft. Yes, well, Admiral, I believe this would be the proper place to uh, mention uh, one of the most intricate training devices that I've ever seen. It's at the Mare Island Submarine Training Facility. And actually what it is is an operating section, first of all, of a control room. And then above that, on the next floor, a conning tower. And then way up here, what would be the surface of the ocean, uh, they have a floor on which small models of ships move about so that uh, the periscope here can do the tracking of those boats up there. Let's see how that works by going, first of all, to this training facility right here at the control room and see what happens. Now, these large wheels, what would they be, uh, Admiral? These large wheels, which we see on the port side of the control room, serve to control the angle of the planes in diving. The instrument panel, which you see there, tells the underwater attitude of the ship at all times. The depth gauge, which is one of the most important instruments aboard, records the depths as we go down. Unless the submarine is dodging or attempting to escape death charges, she doesn't go too deep. It is paramount, of course, to submerge far enough for the conning tower and superstructure to be below the surface. But it's also important not to descend to dangerous depths. Mm -hmm. Well, Admiral, I have here a uh, small barometer, and I know a barometer is very, very important in the operation of a submarine, but how does it fit into that pattern? Well, the barometer is important because it shows you the pressure of the air in the control room at all time in the ship. It tells you instantly whether there is any opening which has failed to be closed on diving. Mm -hmm. You recall that the squalus was lost in such, just such a diving accident. Well, now, uh, let's assume uh, for the purpose of our demonstration that we have submerged. What would then be the next uh, step? We should then uh, go to the post of the commanding officer in the conning tower at the periscope. Well, I have a little uh, periscope here. A youngster next door uses it to look over the back uh, fence. And I look in here, and I can uh, almost look uh, right, into the, uh, right into the camera. Uh, you have a cutaway model there. Perhaps you could demonstrate how this periscope operates. Uh, well, this cutaway model will show sufficiently well the principles of the periscope. In the submarine, the periscope is a 40-foot steel tube. The commanding officer looks into this prism here, and the line of sight goes up and strikes this prism here, and so on out to the floor, of, uh, to the surface of the ocean. This prism may also be tilted so that he can search the sky for planes. Well, suppose we go now back to the training facility at Mare Island and see how the uh, periscope would actually work. And here we see uh, Lieutenant Commander D.T. Morris going through a periscope drill, and the command, of course, is up periscope. The skipper's first duty, when, as soon as the periscope comes above water, is to make a full 360 degree sweep of the horizon, to scan the earth off of the surface of the sea in all directions. He then focuses on his target. The next command we will hear is range mark, and following that, bearing mark. <clears throat> At this, uh, uh, co these commands, the assistant approach officer, in this case, Lieutenant Ware, takes note of the range to the target and her bearing on the azimuth circle. And of course, to complete training, uh, the skipper has to have something to focus on. So here we are topside on the third floor of this training facility looking at the boundless sea or how it is simulated. And you'll notice that the deck is marked off in nautical miles. And across it move these little electric powered dollies or crabs as they are called. And on top of each crab is a model of an enemy ship, either a battleship or carrier or a destroyer. Now these crabs can move at preset direction and speeds, which are scaled to the actual speed of ships at sea. We'll now see Chief Lindgren setting up the surface problem on the control board. The zigzag course of each ship is set on the dials, and the crabs controlled from this unit Carry out the plan. Let us watch it operate. That's certainly a console that he has there. It's a, it's it's a very model. complicated device. Must have taken years it to It takes an expert to run it. Now we're on the top side, and here comes the periscope up to focus on the target. Let's right. go below now and watch this operation through the periscope. You see the periscope coming around. Of course, the crew is down there working, as we saw a little bit earlier. There we are. And on the up periscope, of course, the skipper again makes a complete circle to scan the horizon. And then he focuses on the target. 
And very soon the target comes into view. In this case, it happens to be a heavy cruiser, which has been moving across the deck, mounted on the top of that crab. The most ingenious arrangement. And right here, of course, is one of these crabs, of the type we were looking at. And you see on the top here is the out or the model on which the skipper was focused, and the mechanism is down in here, which moves this in any direction, uh, whichever is desired according to what is set up in the console. Well, now we've uh, talked a little bit about the eyes, the periscope, the eyes of the submarine. How about the listening devices, say the sonar of a submarine? Well, the sonar system of the submarine is almost equally important with the periscope. It is represented on this model by this bubble on the keel. With this device, the operators can pick up underwater sound, much as a radio picks up sound waves in the air. And then by the character of these sounds, you can tell what sort of an object is out there in the water, either ahead of you or any other place in the area. That's right, Earl. <clears throat> a good sonar operator can tell the difference between the propeller sounds of a carrier and those of a destroyer. Mm -hmm. and of course, we should mention that the sonar system also is able to send out uh, supersonic waves, and those go out and hit an object and <coughs> bounce back to the submarine. And by the interval of time elapsed, from the time they leave the ship until they come back, we can calculate the range. Just how far away that object might be. Well, suppose we listen to some of the things we might hear from a submarine if, uh, for example, we were listening to a commercial ship, such as a freighter the uh, sort of a beat that we would hear from the propellers, and then followed by the beat of a faster ship such as a destroyer. 